Your Excellency, Dr. Susilo Bambang Yordiono, President of the Republic of Indonesia, Ambassadors, International Representatives, Indonesian Ministers, Ministers from across Southeast Asia, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to the Forest Asia Summit, led by my organization, the Center for International Forestry Research, and co-hosted by the Indonesian Ministry of Forestry. It's a great privilege for me to welcome you all. Together we can take the opportunity to make a difference, because our world is at a turning point. Decisions are to be made on the international arena over the next 18 months that may shape our common future for generations to come. Forests and landscapes in Asia are a critical part of that future. Producing food, protecting the environment, progress in gender and equity, providing opportunities for livelihoods, and proceeding against climate change must all happen at the same time and often in the same places. We must succeed with this, not only for the hundreds of millions who live in this region, but for the entire planet. I refer to three global policy processes and initiatives that are underway. Over the next two days, we can show just how central and integral forests and landscapes are for making progress in these. First, the post-2015 agenda and the sustainable development goals. The SDGs will be a reference point for our efforts for years to come. Some are concerned that forests are not visible as a single goal and fear that forests will now receive too little attention. But I argue the opposite. We have and we must take the opportunity to demonstrate that forestry contributes strongly to all development priorities. But for this to happen, sectors must work together to find combined landscape solutions. That is why we want to see a dialogue between forestry and agriculture, between public and private, and between urban and rural. The second global priority is the next climate agreement. The Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change has just released its, its fifth assessment report on climate change adaptation and mitigation. The IPCC reports show just how important are food systems and forest management. They show that adaptation and mitigation in the land-based sectors are a very big part of the solution. We will learn more from Dr. Pachauri, the chair of IPCC, in his keynote address tomorrow. Later this year, the world's climate negotiator will meet in Lima for COP20, a milestone towards a new climate agreement. We have the privilege of welcoming Peru's environment minister, Manuel Pulgar Vidal, the incoming COP president, to speak at the Forest Asia Summit tomorrow. And third, the Green Economy Initiative. Across the world, governments, businesses, and consumers are beginning to change the way they operate to make sure that the natural resources we draw from today will still be there tomorrow. But this also requires a new way of thinking, new ways of leveraging capital and building rural economies, new ways of working together, again, across all the sectors in the landscape. Green growth with equity, indeed, in my view, starts with sustainable investments in the landscape. And let's remember that forestry is a cornerstone in a green economy. Each of these three ambitious aspirations relies on knowledge. Good decisions make good use of robust, reliable, and relevant evidence. Evidence that informs us not only about the state of knowledge, but also about options for action and the possible consequences of those actions. CIFR has delivered forestry research across Asia and the world for more than 20 years, together with many, many partners. 
And we have built this summit on the foundation of that research and partnerships. We call on you today for your views on priorities and for your commitment to research on forests and landscapes, to inform policy processes, to inform business practices, and to find the path through investments, through dialogue, through research towards a sustainable world. Now I would like to introduce someone who does not shy away from making and keeping commitments. His Excellency, Susilo Bambang Yordayono, the President of the Republic of Indonesia. Two and a half years ago, at a conference like this one, President Yordayono announced that he would dedicate the remaining years of his term to the protection of the country's forests. Since that time, President Yordayono introduced a morator moratorium on new forest concessions. He formed a government agency dedicated to Red Plus, a policy framework that aims to slow the rate of climate change through fewer emissions from forestry. Since then, Indonesia has changed its laws on indigenous people's rights to customary forests. And during that time, President Yuriona has championed inclusive green growth. And also during this time, President Yuriono co-chaired the high-level panel tasked with designing sustainable development goals and delivered the panel's recommendations to the UN Secretary General. Making commitments to green growth, equity, and sustainability and follow, following them through takes foresight, innovation, and leadership. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor to introduce His Excellency, the President of Indonesia, Susilo Bambang Yudhoyono. <laughs> 